Testing one, two.
Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing.
Good afternoon. I'd like to call this special call meeting to order. And if everyone would please stand and turn on our prayers and our prayers. Lord, we, uh, we just seek you for wisdom and guidance, God. And we uh, celebrate the great blessings that we have in this country. Uh, the freedom of speech, we have to express ourselves, God, and the ability to uh, just see our kids live to be the best they can be. And God, I lift up every child that's in the school system, God, every teacher, and administrator, bus driver, lunchroom worker, coach, that we go about the business of what we are so good at, that is educating and developing children. God, I pray that you give us wisdom and direction. Your name is Brian. Yeah. Attention, salute, pledge. And the United States of America. And we see the great Bible, the glorious strength, one of the nation, one of the God, and the people of the world. Coming from everywhere, no one's saying that she is zoomed in over there, and we'll be taking the minutes of the meeting in Colin Grove. Uh, C. Ward is not going to steal, he is still out of the country. So I just want to bring that up. Um, Sandra, if you call roll, please. Kathy Brown. Here. Kim DeShazo. Here. Mark Sims. Here. Sherry Talbert. Present. Steve Ward. Cruz. Yes. So again, thank you for everyone for being here. This is our second call meeting in four days. And, um, there's a lot been going on, and we want to update everybody on that. And then the purpose of this meeting tonight is for an open discussion among us board members with the public present about the direction we're taking in a point of um, in securing a acting superintendent during this time. We need to conduct civil business, and in order to do that, we have to have an acting superintendent. So we are governed, I want to get a little information, we are governed by the Alabama Association of School Boards. That's our protocol, that's our laws. Every, every public school system in the state of Alabama is a member of AASB. Um, they provide legal services and resources that we use as a board uh, for, and for all the other uh, state of Alabama school boards. I wanted to make sure y'all knew their name because we're going to be talking about them in our discussion. Um, this is the first time we can only meet more than just two of us in an open forum because of something called the Sunshine Law. So we're meeting here tonight to discuss this with you present, and I'm going to turn it over to Kim. She's going to take us to that discussion about what, what we're doing. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so uh, in, in determining what to do in terms of an interim or well, an acting superintendent, rather, um, we have a couple of options. We can look internally or we can look, look externally. Um, looking internally has their pros and cons to both. Uh, looking internally, uh, if someone that, that knows our system and is comfortable with our system and, and knows our people. Um, however, if they have another job and to take one from our internal person, we do take them away from their job and we got to find somebody to do their job and they're asking them. Um, so there are pros and cons to both. Looking externally, of course, it's somebody that doesn't know our community, but um, they, you know, that may not be a bad thing. They bring up, they bring new ideas, they bring fresh ideas, they bring experiences from their own, um, from their own, from their themselves. So um, we reached out to the Alabama, or we reached out to the Alabama Association of School Boards, which as Kathy just said is our governing body, and asked them for recommendations from um, from their. I guess they have a list of superintendents <laughs> that are retired um, and are not, so they would not be someone that would be seeking out um, a, a job anywhere permanently. They would simply be coming in and, and acting as superintendent temporarily. Um, and they would, um, and, and it would be someone that comes in and, and does on a temporary basis. The, and, and, and Mark has spoken with them, so I'll, I'll let you explain who you talk to and what, what they have, have done. But, but I think that what we have, what we feel like is the better course for us to take right now is that we go external, that we use someone from the, the, the Alabama Association of School Board, recommend someone that they, they have, they vet and they're going to give us, I guess, a list of people to, to talk to. This it's not your first time to experience this. I mean, the need for acting superintendents happens many times in other states, one would imagine. I had a great conversation with Sally Smith. She is president of the Alabama Association of School Boards, Susan Salter, who is over development. 
Uh, we talked for 40, 45 minutes. We had swapped some emails in the middle of the night last night. They have candidates that have retired from superintendent roles in state systems, uh, probably 7A, in some areas smaller, some other parts of the state. Uh, these people are still very involved in education, many times in some roles. Some serve on state accreditation committees. They are in retirement in some form, but they have many times some of the candidates that they are talking to have done interim slash acting superintendent roles. This is not their first rodeo for something like this. So what I asked them to do uh, to save us the time is that a few people that we could talk to. And then the purpose of tonight will be to set up a format that we can move as expeditiously as possible for meetings with these candidates once they supply us those who are interested in our opportunity and to discuss with them and begin to work out details. I do not think that something like this is not as robust as you know an interim process where you're trying to hire for a full-time role. This is someone that basically the way I like to say she was one of to your point, allow our people to do what they do well. And to be the person that provides some coverage and help some expertise, and just, you know, keep the ship sailing in the right direction, which is a really good direction. So, so what, where does that stand now? Where, where? They should be, depending on some of the conversations you're having. Hopefully, I have a list of some people tomorrow. Uh, no guarantee on that because I guess they're reaching out to people, but I know they made some calls today. And then we can start having some Zoom calls or in person tomorrow or whatever, pretending. Uh, Assuming that we set the standard for that to meet all the regulations. Okay. Sure. I feel like that's a great idea. We can take some way in the external to come in to, to continue to drive the ship in the right direction. And like you said, Kim, they can bring some fresh ideas to us. And right about now, that's what we need to make sure that we continue to be a confident staff. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, I think this is a great way because I'm more concerned with our assistant superintendents handling their roles and the changes we need to make and the problems we need to solve. So I think this is a great way. My first concern is there, and I think the second one is great to go external. So to help y'all as much as possible. So anyway, um, anybody else any discussion up here? I think I guess the question would be going from here. Um, <clears throat> All five of us can't can't we have we all have jobs and we have schedules of our own. I think that we probably need to again. I think I used this word Friday right, kind of divide and conquer some of this. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, you're you reached out to them and got and are going to get the list. I feel like if you and 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 one other person can conduct these interviews and do some of this preliminary stuff and then come back to us and then can have. A recommendation whether that is one or two people. I don't know if you're going to get a list of seven people or, or three people. I don't. I don't know. Um, and but I think that what we do is we. I mean, I, I, obviously, I don't think we're at a place with both. And I don't know. No, but I was going to. I mean, depending our discussion on this, I was going to recommend not that I needed a motion. If this is the direction we want to head in, to table the vote. We're not ready to name an arrow tonight. Uh, we're letting y'all know of our plans, and we feel just moving forward that we we just met on friday and it's today and we've made a lot of progress but we want y'all to know where we are in this progress and how we are going to handle this and being very careful about this and so i would like if y'all have any other comment before i'd like well, to make it be easy to have my back into that process mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I need a motion now to table the vote for tonight. Um, we're not ready to do that, and so I need a motion. I'll motion. I'll need that. I'll need that we table the motion. I need a second. There you go. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Now, so then again, the next thing would be that we, if, if Mark and Cherry are going to go and Take on this thing at the from the preliminary stages and go ahead and, and start vetting those people out, conducting some preliminary interviews. I guess we need a motion to allow them mm -hmm. authorization to do that. Um, I, I'm happy to make that motion that we that we make take um, Mark and share everything de facto, but then I guess alternate, yeah, yeah. an alternate in case they can. Um, yeah, I mean, you go for it. Okay. I, no, I, no if you want that, or it would be you, but I, I would have a full time. Job that I have definitely do. My part, not have that. No, no, I'm not going to take away from the 
Okay, so I will do the, the, the two goals are the um, go in and, and do the preliminary interviews and then have it to do the alternate if one of y'all can't be present. Um, that's not you make a motion, so I'll second. All in favor? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Um, we also wanted, that's our update tonight. We're over that. We also, several of us have updates on things that we've done. Uh, as y'all know, we sent out, we have sent up the emails. A couple of us have had glitches with our emails and those have been worked out tonight. So we are trying expeditiously to get all those emails answered. In a timely manner, please bear with us. Um, like I said, two people had glitches and could not access them up until tonight. Um, also, we are working on a website uh, for the school board on the main school website where we can post bullet points of what we've talked about at these meetings. And that way, if you want to dig deeper into it, you can go into the minutes. At least you'll know by the bullet points what was talked about. If you're not here or if you don't watch it on live stream, that that is something we're working on. So maybe in the, hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll have that up and running. I expect we will have to we, our next meeting scheduled meeting, which is also a board training session, I will stop calling it a retreat. We're not going anywhere. Um, anyway, I expect we will have a call meeting before October 17th. So be on the lookout for that because if we hope that this works out, we'll have an announcement to make about that. Okay. I think Kim, you had something I sure Sherry had some sure I got some updates. Um one, let's 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 talk up take each topic in order. One of um, safety. Um, I've talked with Chief Rush, and in the last couple of uh, days, you know, had several conversations. The first thing that I can report is that effective today, um, not just the SROs, but all members of the Trustville Police Department now have key card access to all five schools. So um, that's a new development. I didn't know that that wasn't already the case, but that is the case effective today. So. Um, there were an emergency um, at, at one of the schools, but not only the SROs have access, any police officer that's coming doesn't have to wait to be, be buzzed in or, or get their way in. They got hard. They swipe it, they go in, they got keys, all that. So that's one development. Um, I've also um, had a lot, of, I've had people reach out to me about safety and, and people that are with independent organizations that have offered their services to help with threat assessment protocols. Um, present policies and procedures that they, and just training that they may offer. Um, one of those is with the state of Alabama, and he is, and, and I have forwarded that, that information as well as the independent organization information to Chief Rush. Um, I feel like that's, he's much better, he would be much better at, at figuring that out and, and vetting those out than I would be. Um, so I sent that to Chief Rush. Um, at his request, and I also invited Chief Rush to come to our October 17th board meeting to spend um, some time with us. I, I, I did apologize to him that Chief Rush never needed a job to do. And I, but his job was to, to vet those things out, look into those things, and to report to us on the 17th. If he thinks that any of those are programs that we need to develop or, or um, and when, what needs he to have to be able to put those in place. So I expect we'll hear from Chief Rush on the 17th about that, if not sooner. Um, by way of um, another thing that I have done in the, that we've done in the last few days is um, I, Robin Sparks with the Community Foundation of Greater Birmingham has reached out to me. Um, they, the Community Foundation of Greater Birmingham, offers some programs that include um, mental health and bullying um, to programs to be done in the schools. So I have a lunch meeting scheduled with her on. Friday, if any one of y'all, only one of you, but if one of you would like to come and join me for that, <laughs> then, um, okay. yes, that's right. Y all, y all, yes, don't be here. So um, that is scheduled for Friday. I'm very interested to hear what Robin has to say about the, pro the programs that they have. I believe that those programs would be free of charge to us because it's the nonprofit foundation. So um, we're going to learn more about that in the next in the next week. So I was very happy to get her in. Um, as far as um, by way of an update, um, y'all, I just haven't gotten to the parent advisory board yet. I'll get there. I just one thing at a time. I'm working on it. I've got some, I've got kind of a short list of, of, of names and things that we're working with, but I just, I haven't gotten there yet. Um, but, but as far as the independent assessments, providing facts, I know y'all, 
or and everybody's interested in that, um, I again reached out to the Alabama Association of School Boards, our governing body, and asked them for recommendations of um, somebody to use for that. Um, and a name came presented to me. Her name is Dana Hill. She's an attorney and she's an education attorney. She's been practicing for 23 years. I think she practiced, started practicing law in 2000. Um, and so when I got her name, I I looked up the top of her she's been, uh, and, and it just so happens that I knew the managing shareholder of her firm called him to say, hey, what do you think? You know, do you think she is, a, is a, you know, I know you like her and it works for you, but I'd like some more information. Just so, and, and he, of course, gave her a really good recommendation as well. So I talked to Dana this morning. She's running conflict checks and looking into um, to make sure that she doesn't have conflict. Um, but she is in the Birmingham office and is expected to get back to us within um, by Friday with her scope of work and her needs, what she wants. I've already sent her, she asked for our memorandum of understanding. I've already sent her that between us and the Entrustal Police. So I've sent her that today. And um, I think she's going to be, I think she's going to be really good. All she does is education law and um, she seems to be very, very sharp. So I'm, I'm pleased with, with that. I think she's going to be. Going to be good, but I'm not, of course, calling her. Okay, so do we have to have another special call meeting if she can clear the conflict of interest thing? I think we've already, y'all already authorized me to retain her. So, okay. so we sure. did that Friday. We did that Friday. Yeah, we did that Friday. So, um, as soon as she comes back saying that they don't have a conflict, her firm doesn't have a conflict, mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think they've ever done anything with Custer City School before, but she just wanted to run that. And um, so, I think by Friday we'll have. Her up and running and look for. Yeah, yeah I just want to make sure you get a pass up because we got a leader down there. Ron, that is, since we voted on that, I just want to make sure we voted on that on Friday to authorize mm -hmm. him. Oh, sure. So we're we're on okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I think that's the end of my report. That's, uh, and I and I, you know, we've all we've all kind of divided, like I said, we've all divided and conquered and had our stuff. So that's. But I think that's what I'll that's all about for today. I think Sherry has something. Yes, I was just wanting to let uh, everyone know that two board members will be visiting the high school on Thursday. And we are in the process of also setting dates to visit the other four schools as well, too. And so just, you know, just going around to make sure everybody know that, hey, we are here to support you. And when I say you, that's including the teachers, the custodians. The, the whole staff, yeah, the entire staff, and so I just want to let you know we're here to support you guys, okay? So we looking for our smiling faces to come. I went by Friday and I got offered a lunchroom cheeseburger. Uh -huh. I mean, that was a flashback right there. So, uh, you'll enjoy some good food. What? All right, that anything else? That's all I've got. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Yes, yeah. so second. Thank you. Thank you.